subtracting sign numbers. My first biggest tip is that when you're subtracting sign numbers, don't think of it as subtraction. I don't even like to write subtraction. Notice I put it in quotes because uh, I really think it's a lot easier if you think of it as adding a negative. So that is my big, big tip. Uh, don't think of this sign. Let's get my capitalization right. Don't think of this negative sign as subtraction. Instead, think of it as a negative. Instead, think of it as a negative, and that's going to make it so much easier to solve these problems. So as we go through, I'm going to constantly be reminding you, think of it as a negative instead of as subtraction. Once you have it um, written like that, if it helps, you can write in any stood plus signs, and then you just add as normal. So let's take a look at a few examples. Um, let's say we had a problem like this. 6, negative 8. Well, um, instead of thinking this as 6 minus 8, did you notice how I said 6, negative 8? So you want to view this as um, a positive 6 and a negative 8. If it helps, you can even write in the understood plus sign. This is really the same thing as 6 plus negative 8. So if it helps, rewrite it. If, if you don't need to, you can simply look at the original problem. But either way, we have six positives and eight negatives. And so that's what we're going to draw a picture of. For our six positives, we're going to draw one, two, three, four, five, six positives. For the eight negatives, we're going to draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight negatives. These six positives and these six negatives will cancel. And we've got one two negatives left over. And so the answer is negative two. Let's try this one together. Negative two, negative four. Now remember, don't think of this as a minus sign. Think of it as a negative. So if you want, you can draw in your understood plus. So rewrite this with an understood plus. Did you put it right here? So this is the same as negative two plus negative four. All right, now we're ready to draw your picture. I'm going to give you a second. What should this be? Two negatives, right? And how about this? Four negatives. What will your answer be? Well, we've got two negatives and four more negatives, so all together we have six negatives, and the answer is negative six. Now there's a very important rule to remember when you're solving um, problems like this. And that comes into play when you have a problem such as, for example, 6, negative, and negative 5. Whenever you have these two negatives right by each other, a double negative, um, they always turn into a plus. So let's write that down. You might want to jot that down somewhere. Whenever you have a negative and another negative, that turns into a plus. So let's go back to this problem. It turns into 6 plus 5, which is 11. One of the ways that uh, this might not make sense at first, but when you think about it, a negative is really like saying um, the opposite of. So um, when you're saying this, this is really saying 6, and then you've got the opposite of the opposite of 5, <laughs> a negative of the negative of 5. And so that turns it right back into a positive. Let's look at one more, another example or two to see a little bit more clearly how this works. Let's try one together. So this one, this problem, negative 3, negative, and negative 9, what would you do first? Well, I hope you saw this double negative right here. And since it's a double negative, negative negative 9, it's going to turn into a plus. Now, I hope you weren't tripped up by this negative up here. This is just part of the negative 3. It's not part of the double negative. So you leave it completely alone. If we wanted to rewrite it, we would say negative 3 plus 9. All right, now I want you to take a second and figure out what the answer would be.
All right, what did you draw for negative three? Three negatives, right? How about for positive nine? Five, uh, nine positives. All right, did you think through what happens next? These three negatives and these three positives are gonna cancel, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six positives left over. Hope you got positive six as your answer. Let's do one more together. Negative six, negative one. What would you do first here? I hope you're realizing that this is a negative six and a negative one, so we're gonna write in an understood plus, and this is the same thing as negative six plus negative one. I hope you didn't think this was a double negative because it's not. We've got a negative six and a negative one. There's no double negative in this case. A double negative would look like this. It would look something like negative six, negative, a negative one. See how in this case the two negatives are right next to each other? That's when they turn into a plus and you get negative six plus one. This one over here, there's no double negative. It's just the understood plus and the one stays negative. Do you see the difference there? All right, let's take a second and solve both of these. Let's start over here. What do you think? We've got six negatives and one more negative. What would the answer be? Well, if we draw a picture, we've got six negatives and one more negative for a total of seven negatives. How about this one? This is a completely different problem, but we might as well solve it. We've got six negatives and one positive. Well, one of the negatives is, is gonna cancel out with one of the positives, and there's going to be one, two, three, four, five negatives left over.